Hey friends, welcome back. So Rollins and I are heading south-ish. But first, Montana. Welcome to the vlog. Well, the 2023 winter adventure has started. Stop number one, the border. And there's like a huge line. Monday the border. We've been here about 20 minutes. Um, barely moving. But uh, yeah, we're on the way. How you doing, dog? You hanging out back there? Not a boy. I know. It's no fun. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back. I know the videos have been late coming. Uh, if you just saw my recent update, you'll know that uh, things just kind of got a little uh, quiet and a little busy and I figured a few things out and been renovating the trailer and all that kind of stuff. But if you want more info on my absence, check that one out. I uh, know that I'm gonna try and do more videos, more updates, more of the travels, and that leads us to this one. So after Severn Dam this year, I head down to Brooks and hung out with uh, my buddy Keith at his place for about a week or so. During that time, I was talking to Dennis, who is the proprietor of the RV repair place that fixed me up last time when I was coming through Montana and <laughs> cooked my axle. Well, during that spectacular week of um, frozen temperatures. Uh, when I was talking to Dennis, he said that he actually uh, had a twin axle that was the same as the one that he put on my trailer. I started thinking that I might as well upgrade. So I called him, asked him if he still had it. He still has it. It's been sitting in the shop. Uh, he actually made a joke. He's been stubbing his foot on it uh, off and on. So we made a plan to put that on and I have four new leaf springs that I have to put on. Um, so basically, instead of doing one job and then taking everything apart and doing another job, I decided, okay, I'll meet up with Dennis. We'll put that second twin axle on. And while everything's basically up in the air, we'll pull the other one off, put all four new leaf springs on, new shackles, new equalizer, uh, get everything ship shape and check the bearings and the brakes on the trailer. Um, basically on both axles and make sure everything is like where it should be and the bearings are good and repacked and etc etc and basically so I just don't really have to think about it other than bearings for at least a year or two. That's the plan. Made an appointment. My appointment is actually for tomorrow and essentially Rollins and I weren't going to leave Brooks until today but I was keeping my eye on the weather and there's a big, huge winter storm coming through. Alberta got dumped on yesterday. What you see behind me may possibly be under 10 inches of snow tomorrow, which is Wednesday, which is the day that I'm supposed to be getting the repairs done. And by all accounts, I will be getting the repairs done, but it's gonna be winter. The storm is chasing me down. Um, we went through the border yesterday morning. Um, there was actually quite a line. So I believe a lot of the snowbirds are going, yep, time to get out of here and are starting to head south. Uh, the only advantage that they have is they're probably further south by today and out of harm's way. Because even Ogden, Utah, I don't think they're gonna see much of this, maybe a little rain. That said, we're here, got a second up, got an appointment, we're gonna get it done, but the storm is catching up. It's about four degrees right now. It's actually kind of nice, like it's chilly, but it's nice. If you're wondering where I'm at, basically Dennis, the guy that uh, is gonna be, him and Jeff are doing the work tomorrow, he lives up here, his shop is up here. And yesterday I reached out when I got into town and just said, hey, I'm in town and I'm looking, uh, apparently the Walmart doesn't have any, um, place to stay, can't park overnight. 
do you have any recommendations? And he said, well, I can put you up here. We'll get you a deal. And this is Kim's Marina and Resort. It's on a lake. I'm gonna fly the name of the lake over because I didn't do my research beforehand. Uh, this is Cave Bay, apparently, on said lake. And this is Kim's Marina, and obviously it's off season. They do have some kind of like year rounders up there. I'm not sure how many, but they have an office which is open like till 6 p.m., that kind of thing. There's showers and stuff in the office, which I might take them up on one today. Uh, just have a nice long hot shower before the winter hits. And um, yeah, Dennis called him up, said, can you put up a buddy for two or three nights? And I don't even know what my rate is. They wouldn't tell me because apparently he's handling it or something like that, but I'll find out. The regular rate is, I think, 40 a night, depending what you want. I have power. All the water is shut off and blown out because of the you know, off season, but I do have power. So that's keeping me, uh, I got a little, uh, electric space heater that I bought when I was in Nova Scotia. So right now that's keeping us warm. If I do need a little extra boost, I do have the Mr. Buddy. Today I'm uh, doing a little bit of work. Tonight it's supposed to actually drop down to about minus seven Celsius, so below freezing, which I'm not real excited about. All that said, I'm here for a couple nights. I'll show you around. Obviously it's off season, there's no wood here. Apparently it's quite a happening place in the summertime. A lot of these uh, sites have docks and stuff. So I think people kind of come in here and kind of park for the summer. And this one over here even has a, like a bar set up. Looks like they have a, a fair amount of fun up here in the summertime and the good weather. But for now, it's a pad to park on. I don't have to worry about moving or knocking on the door in the middle of the night or whatever. And it's beautiful. And because we more or less have the place to ourselves, there's nobody around. So I was just playing ball with Rollins, we're having fun. We'll see what comes tonight. The snow is supposed to come in later tonight and well, I guess we'll just see. Anywhere from I think two to 10 inches of snow. Yes, I said inches, not centimeters. So we might be uh, doing a little shoveling tomorrow and sweeping, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted, but yeah. Then after that, after we get the repairs done, depending again on the weather and what the road conditions look like, because this storm is basically going kind of in a big circle, uh, further south, Butte, Dillon, that area. And then I think even down to uh, Pocatello is supposed to get possible snow, more like rain. But then after you get out of Idaho, it basically dissipates and you're into the warmer weather again. So the idea is to basically get out of here. Once the repair's done, get out of here as fast as we can, get down south as fast as we can. And I'm talking like Mesquite, Nevada was prob is probably gonna be my first stop um, just to kind of hunker down, double check that I got uh, any work that comes in done um, and just kind of take a break, warm up, make sure everything's okay with the rig and um, we'll go from there. So that's the loose plan, we all know. What happens to plans? Well, friends, it's Wednesday, the 25th of October. I'm in Montana. And yes, the weather has caught up with us. What a difference 24 hours makes. So yeah, hopefully I can get uh, the work that I came here for done today. And I don't know if we're gonna get on the road today. Probably be one more night here. Hopefully on the road tomorrow because it's supposed to get even colder and I don't wanna be freezing up. So, yep, Kim's Marina in a snowstorm. You love this stuff, don't you? Hey. Where you going, Doggo? You're not.
What are you doing? Huh? You got a snowy, dusty bum. What are you doing? Roland. He loves this stuff. He's crazy. For a dog originally from Texas. Hey. What are you doing, Rollins? Hey friends. So as you can tell, I'm somewhere where it's winter and that might be Montana. Still in Montana, still at Kim's Marina. Uh, it's Saturday, October 28th, I think. And this is about uh, eight o'clock in the morning. This is sunrise somewhere around here. Uh, actually, I'm probably facing it, but it's cloudy. Um, Rons and I are going to try and get out of here. We had a good window yesterday, but that was still basically ended up being the time the repairs actually got done. So, yeah, these guys have been behind on a bunch of stuff because of the snow. They weren't expecting this so early yet, whatever. Uh, I got pushed back by like, well, two days because I had an appointment for Wednesday and that didn't happen, and they said they were coming up Thursday, that didn't happen, and then they're coming up a Friday morning to get me out of here, um, Friday afternoon, which would have been perfect because the weather was actually barely below freezing, and there was some sun shining, so the roads were getting wet. Um, I'm not excited about how they might be right now, but I got to get out of here, because if we don't try soon, and I'm waiting on three or four nights of additional cold, like last night, as well as nothing warming up until basically mid next week. So um, it's supposed to get a little warmer this afternoon. I'm not waiting till this afternoon. I'm gonna just try and snail space it out of here. Uh, the road shouldn't be too bad because of yesterday. So we'll see what's, they might just be a little, little slick. So four wheel drive, slow, We'll get out of here, get down in the interstate. I think the interstates are fine. Uh, but yeah, um, just a little update, Saturday morning. Not looking forward to this, but we're getting out of here.
Hey friends. So, Rollins and I left Helena last, uh, yesterday, Helena, Helena, whatever you want to call it, Montana. We left there yesterday morning, got out on the road by about 20 after eight. And I was basically kept looking at this uh, temperature, outside temperature in the truck. And it was constantly like, well, when we started out, it was like minus 17, minus 19, and this is Celsius. So below freezing. And then we got south a little bit and it was zero, minus two, minus one, zero. Got in around Salt Lake City, Utah, and it was, what, six or seven degrees. Kept going. Needless to say, for some reason, I just kept going. Um, don't worry about the dog. We stopped lots. Every time I got gas, he got a walk. Lots of treats. He didn't really eat much dinner, but then we, well, <laughs> That turned into a bit of a fiasco, but I pulled into Cedar City trying to just get a hamburger. And because I'm towing an RV, I don't tend to try to navigate the drive throughs But it was almost 10 o'clock and all the dining rooms. I like how they use dining room for a fast food joint. That just wears me out. Um, but all the eating areas were closed, so I couldn't go inside to just get a to-go order. So, ended up pulling out of Cedar City and taking the wrong on-ramp. Ended up going north again. <coughs> but at the next exit to turn around, there was a Carl's Jr. So we pulled in there, and I got a hamburger, and I got a, like just an unseasoned cooked patty for him. We shared a little bit of chicken tenders and, you know... He didn't starve, but he didn't eat his dinner. He didn't eat dog food. So <laughs> he's looking at me like, yeah, whose fault is that? Anyway, we got to Mesquite. I was gonna pull into a casino, went into the Virgin River Casino, the big open gravel area that they used to have in the back is closed off. And all the RV spots were like jam packed full. Everybody's side by side like sardines. And I'm just like, nope. So pulled out onto the boulevard where there was a couple of trucks parked parked along the side of the boulevard there and the wind came picked up and it was crazy windy crazy windy crazy still windy but we got up this morning and I was thinking about like trying to get some water because I need to get onboard water it's from somewhere and I'm just kind of like I'm probably a little overtired a little kind of like residual tired, whatever you want to call it. But um, I'm just kind of at that point where, you know what, I'm, well now I'm in Vegas. So I'm like, what, three hours, about three hours to quartzite, three and a half hours. And I'm pretty much just ready to just go there, get the long-term permit again, hunker down. I have work to do for tomorrow. Um, so basically you get there, get the permit, get water, um, get everything set up, settled, do the work I gotta do, and then kind of use that as home base for the first month or two. Um, maybe you like leave there after Christmas and go somewhere else. I really don't know at this point. Maybe we'll go exploring before then for a couple of weeks and then come back or something, who knows. We'll see what happens, see how work goes. Uh, but yeah, there's just a rough, off the fly update from the road on our way back south. So yeah. How you doing? You ready to go? It's a short day today, not like yesterday. Yesterday was crazy, I know, dad's nuts. It's not your fault. Okay, here we go. Hey friends, 
Welcome back. Rollins and I made it to the desert. It was kind of a crazy drive. I just kept kind of driving and was watching the temperature in the tr in the truck. So basically, the you know, like the little thing in the mirror in the truck basically shows the outside temperature. And as I'm driving along, it's just like, at, well, at first it was like minus 17, minus 14, minus 16. And then pretty much when we got past Helena, past uh, Butte, Montana, then the temperature kind of leveled out around zero. So it was like two degrees, then it's like zero, then it's like minus three, then it's minus one. And it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think the highest it got that day driving, and it was a long day driving because I basically was just going, it's not warm enough, it's not warm enough, it's not warm enough. And we kept driving and driving and driving. And the warmest it got was six degrees going through Salt Lake City. And just the way it timed out, um, I wasn't a whole lot of psyched on this, but we made it. Um, basically drove through Salt Lake City um, rush hour on a Saturday. Fun times. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't rush hour, rush hour, weekday work rush hour, but it was busy. A lot of people don't like, like uh, I have friends that uh, don't like driving through Salt Lake because basically what it, what happens is you, you get to like outside of Ogden and you know, it opens up to three or four lanes there and it's like a hundred miles because you're technically don't, you know, it doesn't actually thin out again until 50 miles past Salt Lake City exits. Like it's just crazy. It's just like this onslaught, like, well, yeah, pretty much what is it? Provo. So from Ogden through Salt Lake into Provo is pretty much just traffic. It's crazy. Anyways, um, but some of them don't like uh, driving through there, so they'll take alternate routes like through jackpot and that kind of stuff. Um, I just hunker down and basically find a lane, not the right lane, not the left lane. One of the middle lanes, just kind of hang out and get it done. So after getting Salt Lake out of the way, I just basically kept watching the temperatures and they just, um, actually started going back down again so I just kept driving and I wasn't really planning on getting to Mesquite but at a certain point that became the destination for the night and it turned out to be a long driving day um, one of the longer ones I've done in a while basically Helena Montana to Mesquite Nevada gas and dog stops and it was about midnight we pulled into Mesquite went to the Virgin River Casino and their RV parking area was packed full um, like sardines. So we didn't stay there. So what I didn't know is the Eureka Casino is a bit better of a spot uh, to overnight in. And you can even stay apparently a few days if you want, but you got to check in with the uh, security, um, the concierge in the casino. But at that point, I was just tired, pulled up. There was a couple of... Uh, trucks parked on the street on the boulevard so basically pulled a little yui pulled in behind one of them went in the back and went to sleep so when i woke up the next day i was a little confused because i was like there's other areas around there that i wanted to check out but i mean i didn't have my imac set up or anything like that i had my phone that kind of thing but i hadn't really done my research on like where to get water because we needed onboard water some groceries and that kind of thing like there's you know stores and stuff in Mesquite, that, that wouldn't have been a big deal. But I was like looking at all the different areas and I'm like, well, how far is that and this and that? And I just kind of got to the point where I wasn't sure. So I literally posed the question to the dog. I'm like, Rollins, do we want to go to the desert here or do we want to go to the desert and, and see Auntie Linda? Because Roy and Linda are here and he loves Auntie Linda because Auntie Linda gives him treats. So guess what? His ears perk up and he gets all excited. I'm like, okay, that decided it for me. Let's just go. But we got here, we got settled. We're just hanging out, relaxing, regrouping, and then I'm going to start shooting some videos. I got a couple ideas coming up. Um, it's basically been just over a year since I got the Starlink, so I'll do a year update on that. And then we'll, do, we'll start doing some day trips. Yeah, we'll go here, we'll go there, we'll go check out something, find something interesting, and uh, I'll start doing some videos in the downtime in between work, since I've kind of figured out the ebb and flow of that and yeah we'll go from there 
So if you're still watching, thank you for coming back because I know I've been basically ghosting you all for eight months. But um, yeah, we're back. Ron's is good. I'm good. Things are going well, much better than last year. So yeah, welcome back and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.